Good morning, afternoon, evening. Welcome to 50 Questions Friday for December 24th of 2021. Just make sure my phone is on silent here. All right. So, well, happy Christmas, everybody. And let's see. So we don't have any questions today for the emails. Um, again, if you are joining us live here, please do jump onto the chat and also drop any questions into the questions tab. And sat at my computer as well here this morning. All right. So, um, if you did not attend the light anchoring, um, I please do check out that last portion of the light anchoring where we utilize the wisdom wand, the wisdom energetics, and we traverse through time. Um, powerful, powerful process in being able to find points in time that you can remember in this lifetime that you go back to for traumatic situations. You bring in that column of light with that wisdom and you come in and hold space for you at that time and shift entire situations. And as we do that work for us through the past, that affects the now. Um, time is we can work through time very easily, especially with these tools. Um, and we can do it otherwise, but these tools help hold the space to where we can actually go back to that time to do the work, to shift those things. So that traumatic experiences that you've had in this lifetime, you can clear and release. All right. So, all right. So we got some people from Maine, Palm Springs. Oh man, Palm Springs would be fantastic to be in right now australia oh my goodness and the height of summer in australia sorry i'm just a little jealous because it's been cold out and i haven't been able to ride a motorcycle for a while and washington state hey thank you all for being here this morning and again if you have questions please drop them over here onto the questions tab um i was trying to get out <clears throat> pardon me i was trying to get cleared up this morning um, before I got on. <clears throat> I was trying to get out these new mini wisdom wands here this morning, but we just couldn't quite pull it off. We we're actually today, uh, because of the holiday, we're taking time off of the studio or at the shop there. So um, we just weren't quite able to complete these. Um, should have the time studies done here. <clears throat> Gosh, excuse me, over the weekend. And so I would say here over this weekend that you'll be able to find these many wisdom wands uh, with a class or without. And these should be available, gosh, maybe today or tomorrow. Um, so, yep. They are pretty phenomenal. They're just like the larger version, except for you can wear it. Um, you know, I just, like I said, I just got a phone call here before I started and one of our friends wears hers as a pendant um, and she doesn't think it's too big at all for her, for the normal sized wisdom wand. Um, the smaller one, I elected to have a clasp on on them because to me you know you can wear it passively as a, a pendant and it's going to create that cocoon around you and and that's the beautiful thing about these wisdom wands is just that cocoon that it creates and it's um that cocoon it's it's more of a gosh you know it's not like it's necessarily clearing but it is i mean it's when you're in that space and your awareness is on to something, it releases it, it clears it, it transforms it because the wisdom energy again is utilizing consciousness, our higher consciousness, not our 
fears, emotions, things like that, but our higher consciousness. And it is allowing that to repattern energy, which energy makes up everything in your reality. Everything, everything is energy. And we repattern that energy through consciousness. So when you're in that little cocoon, that is allowing you to repattern your entire reality. And as we shift our own realities, as we all know, that works with the group reality, mass consciousness. And so one way that we can shift the mass consciousness grid is through shifting ourselves. Um, so anyway, huge stuff. So yeah, the mini wand that you can wear, it'll come as with a lanyard so that you can just use it with a lanyard and it's going to be doing great things for you there because really you don't have to actively participate in using these as a wand per se, where you pull it off, you run energy with it, or you hold it to do the columns of light or anything like that, because you can do all of that through just awareness, through intention. But I like the class because you can add it to anything and then you can take it off and use it as a wand. I find that I use the wisdom wand for um, like if there's anything going on with the body. I like to use the wand and actually just run energy to it. That's that's how I do it. But in reality, I could just put my attention, my awareness onto the pain and the wisdom field at the same time and just let it go. But yeah, a lot of times we like to have our mind get involved and do the doing. So this is a great intermediary tool where you can either just use the, your attention, your divine awareness to do the work, or you can put your mind involved into it, your, your body, your emotions, your active using, you know? So anyway, wisdom wand, pretty flipping phenomenal. Uh, let's see. Hey, and hello from South Africa. Uh, Susan, does wearing the wisdom wand repattern differently than wearing the wisdom ring? No, actually, it is that wisdom field that works exactly the same, whether you're using a wisdom ring or the wisdom wand, or you're just tuning into that wisdom field, uh, like what we did on December 3rd, 50 question Friday. Um, so if you haven't done that one, please do do that one too, where you go in and you bring everything to the zero point, And then we walk through into that wisdom field and working with water as well. Um, but no, so the wisdom wand and the wisdom rings are holding the same field. The wisdom wand though. So the wisdom ring to me looks just like a it's just just looks like a light just like a tensor ring because it's creating that that column of light that that field now the wisdom rings um there's just a to me there's there's an energetic a definite energetic difference between the wisdom ring and the wisdom wand for me i'm not sure what that is be to describe besides that it is more tangible and to me, the wand is creating, again, that cocoon style of, it looks like the sun to me is how it presents. It's, it's, it's orange, red, gold. It's, it's like a, it's like a picture of the sun. Um, but it's more of a cocoon shape around you. Um, not sure what that is, but to me, the wisdom wand is just a little bit more tangible but yet you can totally catch into the energetics without having either one of the tools by doing that december 3rd one 50 question friday um using the wisdom ring is perfectly acceptable as well because you can do the same style of work all right so going over here to questions renard hey renard i played around and combined the wisdom wand and divine i am generator Holy smokes, any insight on the energy combo? <laughs> Renard, I saw that post you put on social media. Thank you for sharing that. Um, so the wisdom wand and that generator, 
I don't know. Well, when I saw the photo that you posted of that, yeah, that was pretty potent. Um, so using any of the wisdom tools with any of the other tools that we have, to me, there there's something there's something special about that because it is again this wisdom field, this cocoon that I see, it's in a whole different space and place is all the other tools so it's like it is combining these different spaces and the properties of those spaces by bringing them together so whatever it is that the divine i am generator is doing um through whatever fields in what all it is doing that wisdom energetics comes in and it adds like that extra support to everything that it's doing um, so it, it's kind of like an amplifier, but it's doing so much more than amplifying. I mean, it is bringing, gosh, and I, I really wish I could put into words what all of that is and understanding, but that's one of the things with these wisdom tools is that it is so far out of our understanding and grasp still because it is working in spaces and places that we have not been able to attune our own consciousness and understanding to, you know, for the mind, the heart knows, the wisdom and the soul knows, the soul knows. But getting the mind to wrap around some of those things is still, you know, still a stretch. <laughs> so, but yeah. So I wish I could say more on that, Renard, but it's pretty phenomenal, the the feeling that I got from your post, from your photo, <clears throat> with that divine I am generator in the wisdom wand. Uh, Diane. I tried to time shift with the wisdom wand last night for a serious situation, and it worked. I placed the wand straight up in a Gaia sphere with the wisdom water trio. Whew. No wings of talk and a cosmic sun disc and under and under the sits pyramid. Any comments? Wow. Who that's quite the combination. That feels really good. So so Diane used um to do that that time shift and move through time to work with a space and place in the past um to 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 harmonize all that. <clears throat> so she used the wand. A Gaia Sphere, the Water Wisdom Trio, a Wings of Talk, and a Cosmic Sun Disc under the Assets Pyramid. Yeah, that's 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 a pretty powerful combination um, for sure. It feels really good with the Gaia Sphere and those Wisdom Water Rings. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. Um, gosh, that looks like that could be a new a new activator. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, sorry, I don't have anything else to share on that though, Diane. But thank you for for your sharing of what you did, um, and I'm glad that you were able to shift that that serious situation. Uh, Marie, do you plan on developing a wisdom wand in silver? You know, not at this point. Um, we still we still haven't created anything in the silver with the wisdom energetics um you know i'm still trying to find my way through what it is that where we're at with the tools and what the, where they're going and what they're doing and i just need to sit back and have patience and see so just kind of um taking things a step at a time without too many plans on what it is or where we're going with the energetics of the tools um so as far as the silver one i have often thought that i would like to make an even smaller version um, of the wisdom wand kind of like the quantum healer and remake the quantum healer into a wisdom wand um Still not sure about that. Something doesn't feel quite right. It might not be the time to turn those quantum healers into wisdom wands, which we would do more wraps because um, there's something else with that, with the more wraps on there. Um, so the quantum healers 
are going to stay as they are for a while yet. Um, so once we once we start working with smaller wisdom wands, if we do, then we'll make them out of silver because right now with this 14 gauge and this much silver, um, and we'd have to use solid silver versus sterling, it would be a spendy little wand. Um, silver is actually kind of tough to get right now. We just finally got our, we had to take off our two inch silver water rings because um, the scarcity in silver wire, even though the prices of silver are going down, um, silver wire is hard to get. So anyway, silver someday in the wisdom tools. Uh, let's see. I have both practitioner sets. Darn it, I'm missing some questions here. All right. <clears throat> Christine. I was thinking of ordering both the new Wings of Talk necklace and the Wisdom Wand as a necklace. I already have the Silver Alchemist pendant and was wondering if both would be beneficial with it or one better for me. So... You know, the, the Alchemist pen, it's pretty fantastic because it also contains that wisdom energetics now. Um, <clears throat> I really like using the Wings of Talk with the rest of the Alchemist set. Um, so now that on the Wings of Talk page, we actually have it listed so that you can also get this two-inch harmonizer ring around the back. And it's also listed on that same Wings of Talk page, the divine I am, which goes in the center of this. So this makes that, um, that alchemist set these three with the, um, wings of talk. So gosh, you know, that's, that's a tough one to say, Christine on, because if you already have the silver alchemist pendant, um, the wings of talk does pair very well with the alchemist tools, the alchemist pendants, um, the energetics is fantastic that way. So, I mean, it, it is, it is a, a, a great addition that wings of talk. Um, but the wisdom wands are pretty phenomenal. I would say that if you're going to get anything, get a wisdom wand, um, you know, and like I say, these smaller ones will be available that you could actually just clip on and utilize with with your um pendant that you have so yeah christine i wish i could say you know if if um if money isn't an issue yeah totally get the wings of talk and the wisdom wand and wear them all together um you know because the wings of talk is also doing something great for the environment it's also expanding out um and it's just it's a whole different energetics as well so anyway, they, they do work well together with the alchemist. Um, let's see. And Christine, I also have both the practitioner sets. and was wondering if I needed to add the practitioner wisdom ring if I was sleeping in the column with the wand or the wings of talk. And no, and actually, if you have that, um, the alchemist practitioner set now, that is bringing through the wisdom energetics now. So so just having that, that alchemist practitioner set you don't need that wisdom practitioner ring because that is bringing that all through for you already. And then plus, um, yeah, if you have the wand or the wings of talk right there with you, then that is also bringing through those energetics. Um, you know, for the wisdom wands, most all of us sleep with our wisdom wands. Um, you know, Mary at the studio who answers the phone there, she sleeps with hers on her pillow every night and she does a lot of work in the dream time um and does great things in the dream time with having that wisdom wand under her pillow every night and then plus when we lay down to sleep at night we um you know it's when most of us end up just checking in with our physical and you can utilize that wand for the physical or anything that's coming up as you're laying down in that space of peace um, you can do any of that other clearing work so that it's not running in the mind. So the wands are great for bedtime. 
Oh, yes. Uh, and then Christine asking for a comparison of the mini wisdom wand and the full size. So there is the full size and the mini. They are actually um, one half the size. Um, so, well, I guess it's a little less than a half the size. But so there's the, the mini wisdom and the larger wisdom. And it's a gauge smaller on the wire. And the tube is about half the size as well in diameter. So it's still a pretty hefty little pendant, though, this wisdom wand is. It's um it's it's heavier than the than the coil pendants. And it's about the same size as the coil pendants, just for comparison, if you happen to have one of the coil pendants. But um, yeah, I think these will probably end up replacing our coil pendants. Well, maybe we're going to change our energetic transformation package um, and take that coil pendant out of there. And I think we're probably going to add this little guy into there instead. Uh, let's see. All right, just checking over here on our chat and our questions. Yeah, I wasn't planning on doing a Christmas Eve thing. I was actually going to go to the dentist today, and I forgot, and I scheduled both at the same time. But I chose to be here with you guys instead of going to the dentist today. So, um, But we might not do much else here today. Um, we've got a few people on, but... Um, Questions, like I say, we didn't have any questions with the uh, with the internet, with email, and I was hoping to have these mini wands released so that I could have um, you know done a little thing with you guys here for releasing the wands today. But I'm not sure if, if it might not be until Monday that they're released. But do keep an eye. Um, I'm hoping that sometime here soon in the next day. That we'll have these ready so anyway um and i was trying to think if there's anything else for announcements um i not that i'm aware of we're just moving right along um happy new year to everybody you know a lot of people talked about how december 21st marked that new year and yeah, it's, <clears throat> I, I am very excited to move into 2022. I feel it is going to be a phenomenal, phenomenal year. Um, just a lot happening right now. And um, yeah, very exciting. Uh, another question here, Elaine. I have three golden fire generators, the original version. How can I step them up to equal the new ones? So the golden fire generators are always being updated. So anytime we do any updates with the golden fire energetics, those get updated as well. Now, if you are meaning to take a golden fire and change that into like a divine I am generator or a wisdom generator, um, that we the, the golden fire basically always contains everything from the golden fire and then that divine i am generator contains everything from that divine i am but that also contains everything before it um <clears throat> so it's it's every time we make a new frequency you know the from the golden fire to that divine i am generator um Every time we make a new frequency, so then that divine I am, that newer frequency would contain everything prior to it, like the golden fire. Um, but it doesn't work the other way that when we have a golden fire generator and we make something new that that goes into the golden fire. It, it's not, it doesn't flow that way. Um, but as we raise the frequency and vibration of all of the energy tools, it raises everything that came before it. So that golden fire that you have, and, and if you bought that originally, 
um, here a few years ago or a couple years ago or even months ago, it is still stepping up as all of our tools step up in frequency and vibration. So that golden fire now that you own is not the same as when you had it before. It is, it's more than when you had it originally. So those ones are, all of our tools are always shifting, but yet it'll still just be the golden fire. Um, now, if you want to add another field, so if you have a ring, whether it is like a, a spurling ring or somebody else's ring or one of our older rings, you can take it and add like, let's say the, the wisdom um, one of the small wisdom rings or any of the wisdom rings or any of the regeneration doesn't matter. Whatever you add into that other frequency of ring, it'll shift that energetics of everything. So if you want to shift a golden fire generator, let's say I have a Gaia sphere here and you want to shift the energetics of this sphere, you would just take a different ring energetic this one is the wisdom and you would slip right inside of here and that would shift the energetics. So this is wisdom as well. But if this was a golden fire Gaia sphere and you put that wisdom ring inside of here, it would shift the energetics of that sphere. So that's one way that you can shift the energetics of, of the older tools that if you would like to have that generator um, carry some different energetics in it, then yeah, you would have to add an actual, you know, and it can be a small ring or it can be a large ring. Does it matter the size of the ring or the specific tool? Um, you know, you could even put a wisdom wand inside of that golden fire generator and it would shift it. So, um, introducing the tools to someone else, which one item would you start with? That's really a good question. Um, when you when you go to introduce a new tool uh, tool to somebody, um, you know, because everybody is a little bit different, and a lot of people will resonate with a different tool. Um, I still like to take them to the. <laughs> I, I get them a wisdom a wisdom ring or a wisdom wand or the mini wisdom wand, I would go for the latest tool that we have um, to introduce somebody because it's not going to, um, it's not like the newer ones that are more expansive, more potent, work on so many different areas of, of, of everything. Um, it's not like those are for you know, advanced workers or practitioners or anything like that. They are for everybody, but no matter where. So usually when people go to look at the photos on the website, they will resonate with whatever it is that that draws them. Um, so right now, actually, the golden fire comes up. So I guess um, tapping into the person that you are considering would be possibly something in the golden fire. Um, so yeah, there's not one specific tool that I would say that it would be a generic one for, for everybody to, to introduce them to the tools. Though I, like I say, I do like the idea of getting the, the highest, the latest, greatest, the, you know, that, that, that highest connecting tool, because that's just where I like to go with things. Um, so, but, you know, Bobby, if you would like, you are welcome to email me um, with your specific person and I could certainly tap in and help you there. So I'm going to write my email in right here and that way you are welcome to, you know, email me with the person that you have in mind and I can sure tap in. Uh, Diane, the new activator from last night that <laughs> you set up with the Gaia sphere and the rings and the wand. 
um, is still set up and transmits passively to create purity in objects and the atmosphere. I counted my blessings during the time process. Peace on earth, goodwill to men. Yeah, yay. Diane, I'm glad that you still have that set up, and that does feel really good with the Gaia sphere and the divine I am wand and the water alchemist rings. I'm going to play with that as well. Um, so, yeah, thank you. Uh, Victoria. When you're shifting one tool with a ring, do you need to leave it there indefinitely? Okay, so that whole concept that we were just talking about a moment ago of taking a, a, a certain frequency, a ring or generator, and adding another tool to it to kind of um, to piggyback on. So let's say we have a harmonizer ring, and we want to bring in the Divine I Am energetics. So this is creating that field, the harmonizer. When we bring this in to this field, whether it's a little tiny Vesca, tiny Vesca Pisces or whether it's fully in the center, when these fields are overlapping, it is then bringing both energies through these fields. Because again, these fields are a column of light. And within that column, when we start to mix those energetics, those energetics mix within each column. So when you're using any other energies besides the wisdom, then yes, you would need to leave this ring in there indefinitely. So this ring is what's holding the space. So the energetics come in. Now, if you have a harmonizer ring and a wisdom ring, you can bring those two together and intend to shift the energetics of this harmonizer ring. It's not going to completely change this harmonizer ring into a wisdom ring by doing this. And this is a wisdom ring as well. But when you have the intention of updating this harmonizer ring, bringing in the highest possible energetics, you go into the heart space, you have the intention that it shifts the energetics of your other ring or your other tool and then you let it go. So for like those golden fire generators that you were speaking of, you could use a wisdom ring, take that generator, bring them together in the heart space, ask that it brings through the highest possible energetics of this golden fire generator. It still may be a golden fire generator that has little aspects of perhaps the wisdom ring. Um, it's hard to say. It's very dependent on what is in the highest and best for that tool and for you, well, for you, that that shifts it to. But that shift is permanent. So that goes back to when we were talking about um, somebody who had a spurling ring and had the wisdom ring and how they brought those two together and that it shifted the energetics of that spurling ring. Um, but it's, it's the same as shifting the energetics of water or, or food or a plant or person. It's, it's, it's working with the consciousness and it's just expanding that connecting it higher. So it's bringing through the higher aspect of it. Um, if that makes sense to you. All right. Now, let's see another question here. Uh, from Kim. I wear now daily the infinity, the cosmic sun disk, divine I am, quantum healer, and wisdom wand all together. I can feel my heart chakra opening. How can I speed this up? To speed it up is simply just an intention and allowing, um, not fighting it. So to speed everything up is a surrender. Um, a surrender to the process. Your soul is the one who is running the process. So it's a surrender to the soul, a surrender to the process. Because 
there's a lot of other things connected and tied into all of that. So if you are wanting to see that heart open more, perhaps there's other things that need to be released um, and, and cleared and let go of. But they may be things that you don't feel you'd like to let go of from the human perspective. So anytime that we are in surrender to the process, then the soul goes through, the universe goes through, and starts to shift everything. Cool. I can feel you allowing that shift right now. And some other of you as well. That's fantastic. So yeah, just keep breathing and allow that surrender, allow the shifts to take place. All right. <laughs> Christine uh, was making a comment. No wonder people sleep with the wisdom wand. I have been taking a picture of the wisdom wand to bed from your website and focus on it for a few minutes. And I do find myself very tired that I nod off almost immediately. <laughs> That's fantastic. Awesome. All right. A question from Marsha. I just received the wisdom wand yesterday. I missed the first 20 minutes. Did you go over how to use the wand? Um, no, we didn't really do too much um, this morning on the wisdom wand. We were just talking about the the mini wisdom wand here at the beginning of this, of this webinar. But um, if you go back through to the, um, to the solstice light anchoring event that we did, and the, the first majority of that the first hour or so is just basically talking about the light anchors and, and and the grids and all of that so if you go through to towards the end to where we do the meditation with the wisdom wand and anchoring the column of light using that wisdom wand it's pretty profound because that's where we end up going through to other times to clear things in your past so that is a fantastic use of the wisdom wand is using the light anchors and going through time and doing the work. So no, if you didn't miss anything here though, this morning, Marsha. Um, so <laughs> yay, wisdom wand being delivered today. <laughs> I'm very happy for you. I think you're going to love it. Um, Okay, so I guess um, just another quick announcement is I started to do my um, my personal sessions and um, they're not up on the website yet. I haven't, I need to get a spot on the website for that. But if you look at my social media, there's a link there to, to the personal sessions. Um, and I've done a few so far and with the personal sessions that I do, they're only 15 minutes. Sometimes I go 20. But it's kind of fast and furious. Um, it's been so far that people that have done it have kind of had a purge, a release afterwards. Because, you know, I, I don't like to mess around. I like to just, you know, go for it. Um, so if you like something with a little bit more grace and ease, then I would say go with my sister, Brenda, because she'll spend more time with you and the process afterwards, you know, goes over the course of a couple weeks. But if you're all about jumping in and going for it and getting through it and getting it done, then yeah, check out my my uh distance sessions so anyway another question here oh hey brother man if it's a really large lake and at one end you put a tensor ring and the other end an unconscious person goes into the lake will the water bring the attunement and clearing of the tensor ring to the person if it's in their highest good without the tool itself entering their field. 
That's a really good question. So if you are, let's say, if you put that tensor ring on the other side of the lake, to me, that feels like it is going to shift the water, change the frequency and vibration of the water through the whole lake. But it feels like it's not going to be like the person is within that ring. Now, I feel like if you make a column of light with the wisdom, you know, and again, you don't need to own a wisdom wand to do these columns of light with the wisdom wand. That is on that solstice light anchoring event. That's what we do in that last few minutes is that basically we walk through and you have the attunement to the wand. And then you do that light anchor. And if you use the wisdom wand to do that light anchor, I feel um, that will bring through a more tangible field for anybody who steps into that lake to receive that energetics of that wisdom. That's that feels tangible. Um, so yeah, using the wisdom wand in, in lakes to do the light anchoring, I feel is a, it, it's a powerful, powerful service. Um, let's see. And how do we contact Brenda? So Brenda is at the elders three, three is spelled out the elders three.com or else if you go to twistedsage.com, she is up on the header on twisted sage for distance healing. And somewhere up there, we're going to change the name of that distance healing. And that's where you'll be able to find, find me for my sessions. And then once we have the studio here opened up, we will be able to take in-person sessions here in the studio where we go through all five of the ascension chambers. And with the five ascension chambers, we do four different meditations. Um, these meditations start you out with connecting you to your soul, um, to your guides, working with your guides. And then we step into another space where you're taken to the Bosnian pyramids and work with the light beings on this stone, stone table with the crystals in it and does any huge deep clearing work. So that is our clearing station. And then you go to another chamber where you are taken into a space where you are a creator being working more with your soul light. And then you go into another chamber where you get the activations, such as the sacred heart, the Merkaba activation. And then the final chamber is one that you either can stand in or sit. And at that point that is just going to harmonize and, and integrate things. So the, the studio energy spa will be open here sometime early in this new year. And that is also where you'll be able to book on the website as well. If you ever decide to come here in person. Um, but yeah, yeah. Brenda's Brenda's pretty phenomenal there. So I would certainly suggest working with her. Um, and then Brenda too, she speaks with the innate consciousness of the body. She speaks with the soul. Um, in the sessions that I do, I just take you far out, take you to that zero point space. Um, and then whatever your soul presents for any kind of releasing, clearing work, that's, that's the style of work. <clears throat> that's the style of work that I do is that deep clearing, releasing. Um, and again, the work that Brenda does is that plus whatever else it is that your body and your soul ask for. And she's a lot, she's a lot um, more graceful in the work that she does. Like I say, I just get in and do it. And there we go. <laughs> and then hold on. So anyway, um, cool. Thank you all for being here today. And um, yeah, look for the mini wand coming out. And let's see, I'm trying to think. Uh, we should have a new set of um, the larger set of the water rings coming out in the new year 
here in that first week of the new year, we should have the, the home set version of the water wisdom rings available. And we are working on scheduling a, with a company in California to do our new biofeedback, our new energy studies for, I'd like to do the water rings because I would love to be able to prove that we can instantly restructure the physical water, restructure water instantly is what we're seeing with these. And I want to be able to prove that scientifically for those who need that. But we're also going to be doing our cell tab study. And I am excited for that because we have our old cell tab study, but it's, um, it's hard to understand and we don't own the rights to it. So we're going to get a new cell tab study done here also in the new year, as soon as possible, hopefully by February, that will be ready. And, um, so yeah, really look forward to an expansive year, not only for twisted sage and personally, but everybody, the world consciousness, the universe, um, we're stepping into some big, beautiful things right now. So, um, anyway, Hey, thank you all for being here. Um, oh, one last, one quick last question here. Um, I go to the Springs and get my water from there. Do I need to still do the wisdom rings? Can I, can you talk about this? So if you go to the spring to get your water, go through the light anchoring process with the wisdom wand and anchor that wisdom energetics into that spring. The entire, the entire natural kingdom there would also appreciate that as well as the water, as well as the water within the earth. Um, yeah. And, and then that column of light will be there indefinitely if needed. And it will bring through whatever's in the highest and best, but that will shift the water. So then you don't need to use the, the water rings there. Um, because your water is going to be everything that it can be already. Because when we anchor that calm of light with the wisdom, it's already intended that we are bringing through that energetics of the water wisdom rings and the alchemist set. Because anytime you're working with water and your intention is working with water, you are bringing through the consciousness of water. And then when the con when water is within the field of that column of light of the wisdom it's going to be shifting the consciousness of that water as well so awesome um yay thanks kim for doing the columns of light into your into the water your community drinks and for the state of virginia fantastic um Wonderful. Yeah. Merry Christmas, you guys. Hope it's a beautiful time and gosh, happy new year too. And um, yeah, we will see you next time. Thanks for being here. Take care.